With Season 4's release on the MTC, I'm sure a lot of you are playing Halo 4's multiplayer, and you're probably wondering what is the best loadout for me to do well in the game? Well, in this video, we're going to answer just that question, so stay tuned throughout the whole thing to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again giving our tips and tricks video when it comes to Halo. If you like these kind of videos, make sure to tap that like button. Let me know you want to see some more content like this. So let's get right into the video here. So yes, I've been playing a lot of Halo 4 because it's finally been released on the PC and I'm not playing on the Xbox One so I can actually maintain decent frame rate. It's actually quite great. And I'm actually finding myself with a new appreciation for the game as well, which, you know, it's still my least favorite multiplayer for Halo, but a Halo multiplayer is still better than most multiplayer shooters out there, at least in my opinion. In this video, I want to break down exactly how you can put yourself up in the best situation possible with your loadouts to do the best in the game. We're going to be talking about primary, secondary weapons. We're going to be talking about grenades, armor abilities, tactical packages, and support upgrades. So there's a lot to customize, guys. We're going to go over this super fast to get you guys up to speed as quickly as possible. So let's jump right into the MCC right here. Let's go over the primary weapons. You have the assault rifle, great for close range. Battle rifles are really good for 4v4 gameplay. The DMR is much more suited for long range stuff, for more like BTB. A uh, storm rifle actually is rather lethal when it comes to close range engagements. Uh, you know, don't sleep on it. Uh, the Covenant Carbine, it's kind of an underdog. This kind of works well in both BTB and 4v4 game modes. Uh, not highly utilized too much, but still you can hold your own with it. Oppressor, kind of the same boat. Like it's a close range weapon, slays rather well, but it's kind of funky to shoot with. I don't really like using it too much. You got the light rifle. This might be probably the best weapon to use on your large scale game modes because of two reasons. The the burst fire shot and the single shot fire. Basically, this weapon gives you the best of both worlds. You get the best of the battle rifle close range stuff with the burst fire stuff. And then when you scope in, you get the DMR effect of a nice long range weapon with, you know, four shot kill, which is super lethal. And I really enjoy using this a lot. I'll show you in my builds why I like using it so much. Now for secondary weapons, you have a magnum. Pretty good to kind of spam fire for close range if you kind of need to swap something to do something really quick. Uh, the plasma pistols, you know, the tracking isn't that great. Betch more for vehicles and things like that for your BTB modes. And the bolt shot's still pretty fun for your 4v4 modes or just close range meme engagements. This is a pocket shotgun, kind of OP, but still pretty fun to use. Let's talk about the grenades here. I like using frags mainly, but the frags give you the benefit of being able to bounce it off the wall or around corners to kind of catch people off guards, which is really nice right there. Of course, we all know the plasma grenade. You can stick it to people, so that's pretty easy to do. You can stick it on vehicles and in, in BTB modes. You can throw it on the ground, which won't roll too much, so you can have better predictions of you know player movement and stuff like that to counteract their actions. And I have the pulse grenade, which is not that lethal and doesn't really do that great against other objects because of the bouncing effect. Uh, it does much more of a area of denial kind of stuff rather than uh, actual lethality. All right, let's go through the armor abilities. Promethean Vision lets you see through walls basically when you can use it. Uh, it's good for 44 BTB, not that useful. I don't really use it too much. Sorcerer Pack is an overall great pick. You can use this in pretty much any situation. Very similar to say like Halo 5. It doesn't look that effective in game, but actually is very effective. You can do some really unique maneuvers with it. Hologram is fine for the memes and also bamboozling people. It can kind of throw people off, but not super useful. Uh, Jetpack, I haven't really seen many people use it. I don't use it too much. The maps don't really get broken too much by Jetpack because there really aren't that many surprise locations you can be in, so I wouldn't use it too much. Hard Light Shield, I don't like it too much because it's just kind of more of a compensation for overextending. You can't recharge your shields with using it as well, so I don't really use it too much. And plus, you're very slow while using it. Active Camo, I don't really use it too much because you're not that invisible, not like you are like in Halo 5. It also scatters out the radar so more people get to know where you are so they kind of start playing much more defensive. Auto Sentry, it's alright. It can kind of hold down a corner a little bit if you're looking to be more defensive. Uh, it does, don't expect it to kill anything though. Uh, regeneration Field, I actually really enjoy because it gives you the opportunity to recharge your shields instantly and also do some really cool ego challenge kind of experiences to kind of uh, combat some people. Let's go into the attack packages here, guys. We actually have Mobility, which is Unlimited Sprint. Uh, your sprint already is long enough in this game. If you kind of time it with a jump and don't you know sprint out every single time, you won't really need to use it too much. The maps aren't that big to where you need to use it. Uh, shielding, the way this is kind of worded sounds weird. So shielding speeds up your armor's energy shield recharge rate. Uh, you think that's you know, the time between getting shot and when your shields start to recharge. That's not the case. It's just when your shields start to recharge, how long that takes. So it might take three seconds to recharge your shields normally. With shielding, it takes like one second. 
not that useful. Very situational kind of situ thing. Plus, I teamed up with a regeneration field, honestly. Uh, resupply, though, is a big one. You get to resupply your grenade. Very important. You know, it's part of that holy trinity, right, of uh, grenades, melee weapons from Halo. You need some grenades when you're playing Halo. Armor ability efficiency. I don't use this one too much because every time you die, your armor ability resets. And honestly, the Madrid shard rate on most of these aren't that long. I don't really utilize it too much. Grenadier lets you pack three grenades. And honestly, I'd much rather be able to keep resplying two grenades rather than only have three when I spawn. It's very important to have your grenades. Firepower is really only useful if you're running with one of those primary fully auto weapons. Uh, other than that, I wouldn't really bother with it at all. Uh, requisitions let you recycle your ordinance choices. Uh, so if you want to re-roll that, I really have tried this a lot and haven't really seen much uh, effect when it comes to getting like a sniper rifle instead of like a speed boost. Most of the ordinance are rather toned down, so I wouldn't really bother with it too much. Wheelman is great if uh, you're playing some vehicle modes like BTB, as it increases the long-term durability of your vehicle as well as it, how it reacts to EMP charges. Uh, if you get hit with the EMP shot, like a plasma pistol, you'll only be down for like a second, maybe two, rather than like standard five seconds. So it's actually very useful within BTB. Now for support upgrades, ammo. I mean, I don't find that useful. I pick up a lot of ammo in the game anyway, so it's not that useful right there. Dexterity is actually right, pretty good for the 4v4 modes because it speeds up your reload speed. Right, nice. A sensor does sound nice, right? Get expanded range of your tracker, though it does throw me off when it comes to predicting enemy locations. And for how, the size of the maps and how big the tracker is naturally, I don't think it's that much of a benefit, really. Awareness allows you to keep your radar well scoped in. This can be nice if you're using like a sniper rifle or a scoped in weapon, like say like a light rifle. Though, honestly, I don't really use it too much. I don't find it that useful. Explosives increases the damage range on your uh, grenades. If you're kind of a mean boy, well, there you go. <laughs> uh, ordinance drops is actually really great. It basically reduces the time it takes for you to get your ordinances. The sooner you get your power weapons, the better. So I definitely like that one a lot. Stability reduces the view kick of when you're getting shot. I don't find the view kick too distracting. It's just enough to where you might think about it, but you can compensate for it pretty well. I wouldn't bother with it too much. Gunner is actually really nice if you're using uh, different kind of turrets because it extends the time to overheat. So you can actually keep firing a lot longer. If you're a gunner on a Warthog, this is a great thing to team up with Wheelman because you can keep firing a lot of bullets down there. Stealth, you know, makes your footsteps more silent and makes you harder to see on Promethean Vision. Not a lot of people use Promethean Vision and your footsteps are naturally kind of quiet. Yeah, you can hear them much more than you previously, but uh, maybe in free front this might be useful, but anything else, not really. Nemesis marks the enemy responsible for your last death. Um, kind of useless because most people die within rather close range of each other and if you see an X of your teammate, you know that someone's really around the corner. And Recon Drop calls out Ordnance Drops in advance. Um, not that useful either because they call you out anyways. Plus you can also kind of like mentally time when these are about to drop. You go like, hey, it's been a long time since I've seen a ordinance drop. You can put yourself in the right position there. Okay, now for loadouts. This is what I like to do for BTB. This is my main motor like the base. So if I'm playing BTB that has ordinance drops, I'm using light rifle, plasma pistol, grenade, regeneration field, resupply, and ordinance drops. Uh, the light rifle is such a beast weapon within BTP. It really is like the best choice to utilize, guys. But you get the uh, close range burst round, which is really nice. And you get the long range DMR effect as well. So it's really the best of both worlds. Kind of overpowered when you think about it. For Infinity Slayer, the 4 4 mode, I like using the battle rifle. Much better at close to mid-range engagements. And I like timing up with the bull shot because uh, the puzzle pistol doesn't really track super well. And also having the pocket shotgun is pretty nice. Frag Grenade, Regeneration Field, Grenadier, and Ordinance Drop as well on top of that. Now if I'm looking to drive a lot of vehicles, mainly it's going to be BTB, right? So this Light Rifle, Puzzle Pistol, Grenade, Regeneration Field, Wheelman, and Gunner teamed up together. If you can get the Gunner seat with this on, you can easily slay with that Warhog, guys. Like it's, it's actually quite scary. And for if I'm playing BTB that doesn't have Ordinance Drops, I keep everything else the same, except I trade it out for Dexterity. Having fast reload times, obviously, is pretty sweet. And if I feel like messing around just for the lulls of the whole thing, what I like to utilize is the Storm Rifle. Like I said earlier, this does actually slay rather well. If you can, you can lay down a player with a full lip rather easily. You know, it's not like traditional Covenant weapons where they are good at shields, bad at taking down health. This thing shreds everything, so well, Storm Rifle is really good. Bolt Shot because it's lulls. Uh, plasma Grenade because I like the sick things. Uh, hologram for the lulls of being able to bamboozle people. 
I like to use resupply because obviously I'm teaming it up with explosives to make better grenades. So this is kind of like my fun class if I feel like just kind of messing around just for the lulls of the whole thing. So hopefully this video breaks down a little bit of how the loadout system works and what are the best choices for you. I hope what you take from this video is what game mode do you like to play Think about the situations you get yourself into and what would work best for those situations. Mainly I play 4v4 and BTB when it comes to Halo 4. So that's why I have these kind of certain loadouts. If you're kind of guy who likes to play like, I don't know, free for all or other kind of modes as well, you might find some other loadouts very unique and actually advantageous. If you do have those, leave in the comment section down below. I do read all the comments and try to reply to most of them as well. But anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. If you missed any content from me, check out the videos on the screen right over here. I link to all my news and informational videos if you've been on the loop for the last few days or so. Thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.